people killing it with money, and how you can too. Let's talk about it. I paid off my house last week. Sure did. Sent in the final payment. Got an email two days later. Your mortgage is paid off. Got an email five days later. Everything's been sent to your county office. So hear me out. I'm not wealthy. I don't sell Bitcoin. I'm not in a multi-level marketing, whatever you want to call it. This is good old fashioned spending less than you make. This is putting pen to paper and saying, this is what comes in every month. This is what goes out. We need to have way more coming in than going out. So what are we gonna get rid of? When we started on this journey nine years ago, we sold cars, we fired cleaning ladies, we quit going out to eat, we changed our car insurance to a different company for a better rate. We had a yard sale. I started selling things on eBay. We went gazelle intense, as Dave Ramsey suggests that you do. And we started and going. And it took us nine years to get to where we are. So if you're facing a mountain of debt and you're thinking, I'm just going to keep scrolling because they make more money than me. Or I'm just going to quit scroll. I'm just going to keep scrolling because I don't have anything I can sell or get rid of. Take a minute, take a beat. You don't have to follow what we did. We didn't follow Dave Ramsey to a T, but we did take his principles and apply what we felt like we could to our life for nine years. <laughs> for nine years. This was not for a year. This was not 18 months. This was not two years of hard work. This was nine years and my house is paid off. Yo, guys, anytime anyone pays off a mortgage, that is huge. Paying off a mortgage in general is just massive, but when you pay off a mortgage early and you no longer have that payment going out every single month, that house is yours. You own that house, minus still having to pay property taxes, which, another video. When you walk outside, and you have your bare feet in the grass, that grass feels better. When you sleep in your bed at night and you're paid off mortgage, I'm telling you what guys, it feels damn good. Props to her and her family on kicking ass and paying off that mortgage. Now paying off a mortgage in the finance space sometimes gets a lot of hate, which I've never understood that in my entire life. Why people hate, well, I get the idea behind it because there's people out there who look at paying off a mortgage as the math side, the number side of things. And they say, you would be much better off putting that money in investments instead of paying off your mortgage. And back when interest rates were two, 3%, yes, mathematically, you would have been much better off if you would have stuck that money in the stock market and let it grow over time. But here's the thing. One, you don't know what's always gonna happen. Two, now that interest rates have increased quite a bit, maybe paying off a mortgage is the best route to go. And three, what doesn't get talked about in that scenario is the psychological effect that happens to you when you know your house is paid off and anything can happen to you and you're going to live a much less stressful life when you don't have all those bills going out every single month. As someone who has a paid off mortgage, I did invest while I was paying off my mortgage, but I will say I would never ever go back on that decision that my wife and I made to not have a mortgage payment because it has been one of the best decisions we've made because I get that money back every single month. That's less risk I have to worry about on an annual basis. You know, let's say my income dries up and we're having some tough times. Well, I don't have to worry about still making those payments because they're gone. The mortgage is paid off. Guys, I'm a huge, huge believer in having a paid off mortgage. It takes hard work, like she mentioned, a lot of sacrifice, but once you get there, it is a damn good feeling. Here is my net worth update as a 28 year old who is trying to get my shit together. First category we'll start off with is my debt. I owe 2,200 on a credit card and $7,600 in student loans. I also owe 17,939 on my car loan. That brings my total debt to $27,739. Next section is cash. In my household savings account, I have $6,355. In a joint account with my fiance, we have $4,300, and in my checking account, I have $300. That total comes to $10,955.
And lastly is investments. In a brokerage account, I have $7,411. In my 401k, I have $14,218. And in my Roth IRA, I have $4,879. So that total comes to $26,508. So I'll take my investments and add that to the cash minus my debts, and that leaves me with a positive net worth of $9,724 which is an increase of $3,888 from January. We'll see where I end up next month. Wow, that's a that's a massive increase for a month-over-month -month return on your net worth. Uh, props to her. So if you guys aren't doing this every single month, highly, highly suggest you start tracking your net worth. Most people out there are not tracking that their net worth, and simply what your net worth is is you add up all of your assets, your cash in your accounts, cash you have in your house, any investments you may have in retirement, brokerage accounts, if you own real estate, whatever your positive equity is in the real estate that you own, then you subtract that from your liabilities. Your liabilities are all the debts that you have out in your name. So your mortgage would be a liability. How much you have left on your mortgage, car payments, student loans, medical debt, credit card debt, any type of debt that you have and you owe, that needs to go in the liability section Take the assets minus the liabilities, that's gonna give you your total net worth. I started tracking my net worth back in 2016, and I still remember to this day, when the first day I started tracking my net worth, I had a net worth of a little over $96,000. And since that month of 2016, I don't remember exactly what month it is, it's actually right here. It's a spreadsheet I keep on my desktop. The first week and every month, I open it up and I track my net worth, and it helps me understand one, where my money's going. I also see how my assets are broke up. How much percentage do I have in cash? How much percentage do I have in kind of liquid assets and stocks and in retirement? How much percentage am I in real estate? How much percentage do I have in ownership of businesses? Whatever it is, I track that every single month and it gives me kind of a game plan or at least an outlook or an overview of what I'm looking like. And it also helps out my wife too, as I can come in, show her, hey babe, this is what we got going on. This is what our net worth is. We may need to improve or add a little bit more here over the next few months. And it's a really good game plan to also be able to look at what all you've got going on financially. And when you can set back and look at that every single month, one, it's motivating as hell to see that number increase, you know, not every month, because you're gonna have months that go up and down. but to see that trend line work its way up, it's a, it's a pretty cool feeling. And then whenever you, you know, fast forward, what would that be, eight years from whenever I started tracking money, my net worth, it's fun to go back because I put it on a graph and to see where that $96,000 was when I first started to where my net worth is today and constantly tracking that every single month, it's pretty rewarding to go back and remember the journey of every single month updating your accounts, when you've added new accounts, new types of investments. I remember when I first bought my rental property, I added that to the net worth. So really I wanna give another props to her for tracking her net worth and also diligently every single month planning on how she's going to pay off her debts, increase her assets, and over time become much better off financially. If someone is dependent upon your income, you need life insurance. Term life, it's inexpensive, you guys. Obviously, the younger and healthier you are, the less expensive it is. It is a gift to give your family. When people don't have life insurance and something happens, it magnifies onto a situation where you just can't breathe. I've been to both sides, and I think I've told you privately, there's a particular hollow look in the eyes of a wife whose husband has just died, and she says, I gotta go to work on Monday. I know we don't have anything. Or the other scary is she looks and goes, I don't, I don't know where anything is. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend whose husband passed away and he left a significant amount of money on a life insurance policy and she got to go to counseling yep. and got to grieve and got to be with the kids wherever they needed to be. What a different trajectory, right? Absolutely. To get Absolutely. life insurance, get it, get it, get it. That's so powerful, guys. And this, so let's be honest, life insurance is not something sexy that gets talked about a lot here in the financial space. Life insurance is something we also don't really like to think about because the reason you get life insurance is because you are going to die. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's a proven statement. All of you watching this video right now, including me sitting in front of the camera, at some time in the near future, hopefully far off, we're gonna meet our maker. We're no longer gonna be here. And if you guys watching this video has a family that depends on your income or you have a family and depends on your time helping 
manage the family, meaning those stay-at-home moms, all of you need life insurance. Now, I hate whole life and universal life policies. My wife and I both got term life insurance policies when we got married at 24. We got them super cheap and we just continued to pay them every single year and we got a 30 year term. So come 54 years old, we will no longer have the term life insurance. But my thought process behind that was I have 30 years to get my money right. I have 30 years to have a paid off mortgage, to hopefully have millions of dollars in investments to have enough income generating from our investments to where my wife will never ever have to work again. And we're on that path. But until we reach 54, 55 years old, I wanted to make sure I had something set in place in case I do happen to die before that time comes, then I know that my wife will not have to worry about going right back to work in order to generate income to take care of my family when I'm dead and gone. I would hate that for my wife. So as a husband, all you males out there, the first thing you need to probably do this week is look into term life insurance. And then also to you ladies out there, if you are working or you're not working, you're a stay-at-home mom, talk to your husbands about getting term life insurance policies together. Have one for your husband, have one for yourself. Because let's think about it, if you're a stay-at-home mom and you happen to pass away, what's gonna happen to those kids that stay at home and your wife, when the spouse is watching, the wife's watching? Well now, the husband's gonna have to continue working because if he doesn't have money coming in because there's no term life insurance policy, well now he has to send those kids to daycare. There's a whole nother massive monthly expense that the wife was covering by staying home and taking care of the children. So those are scenarios and things that I know we don't really wanna think about, but we have to talk about them because it's real life, guys. Like it can happen. So if you truly want to make sure your family's taken care of, make sure you're getting term life insurance. And I'll have a link down below in the description of a company that I'd like to recommend if you guys wanna go shopping through them for term life insurance. Use that link down below in the description and I'll have a pinned comment as well. If I were to start over with investing, then these are the three things I would only invest in as a complete beginner coming from a 36 year old former public school teacher with a net worth of two to $3 million. Feel free to save this video for later for reference. First, I wouldn't invest in meme stocks, individual companies, IPOs, or even cryptocurrencies because it's way too volatile. Instead, I would invest in ETFs that track the S&P 500 or the top 500 companies in the United States like SPY. Here are some other alternatives that are also good too. Next, because I'm young, I would invest in ETFs that track technology companies like QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ 100 or the top 100 technology companies in the United States. There's usually a lot of volatility in this ETF, but in the long term, there's a lot of potential for growth. Next is SCHD, which is a dividend paying ETF. This is a little bit more on the boring side, but I do like getting consistent income every quarter. As a beginner investor, I would keep things super simple and not overcomplicate things. Follow to see my next video where I'll talk about some individual companies that I'll be investing in. I hope this helps. That guy nailed it. So we've touched on paying off mortgages, tracking your net worth, and increasing that net worth over time. We've talked about term life insurance. Now we're talking about investing. And if you are new to investing or have no idea how to invest, what he said was spot on. If you are a beginner in the stock market or a beginner in the investing space, do not get hung up on these meme stocks, the stocks that you know your buddy's talking about, the water cooler, you know Monday morning at work. There's a there's a time and place for that, but as a beginner, that's not what you need to be investing your hard-earned money into. You need to be investing in your money, like he mentioned, into ETFs that are tracking the market and that are low-cost ETFs or index funds. Basically, what that does is you buy the fund in your taxable brokerage account, your Roth IRA, whatever vehicle you're using to invest with. Once you buy and invest money into those ETFs, those ETFs spread that money throughout 500 different stocks, 4,000 different stocks. It just depends on the ETF that you're choosing to invest in. I really like VOO, which is the SP500, like he mentioned with SPY. VOO is just the Vanguard's version of the S&P 500 ETF. And then another one I like is VTI. VTI is the Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund. And that is one that gets spread throughout every single stock in the US market, which is a little over 4,000 companies today. I also do like the ones he mentioned. I like QQQM. I also like SCHD. I own all of those in my taxable brokerage account. And then my retirement accounts are predominantly made up of VTI or VTSAX. So I'm a big, big fan of index funds and ETFs that track the overall market or again, the S&P 500. And I'll be honest with you guys, if you start investing today and you just never look at your account, but you invest every single month into those ETFs, 
Now, obviously, I don't have a crystal ball, and I don't know what's going to happen in the stock market over the next 10, 20, 30 years. But if you look at past performance, the stock market generally goes up over time. So if you just consistently put money in, no matter if the stock market's at all-time highs or it's making new all-time 52-week lows, then you can continue to put money in, putting money in every single month, not looking at it, not paying attention to it, making sure investing that money in there. And then once you look at it 20, 30 years down the road, I would like to guess that you're going to be pretty happy that you made that decision. Investing for the long term in good quality assets, you can't go wrong. We have a little over a week left in October and I am trying to pay off these debts as fast as I possibly can. I'm a toddler mom living in Nebraska and I started with $19,000 in debt in April and I am now roughly at 12,000, which means that I've paid off over $7,000 worth of debt since April of this year. However, I still have 12,000 to go and I want it gone. So here's my budget for the next week to make sure that I can throw anything extra that I'm making towards debt and not to spend it. Number one, I have $500 budgeted for travel. The money is already sitting in savings and whatever I don't spend while we're traveling is going straight towards my goals. Number two, I have $50 left for groceries. This feels a little bit low, but we're gonna see. I have $50 for gas. I will need to get gas at least one more time, but I'm going to do what I can to see if I can stretch it to only need it one more time before the first. And then I have $25 for Halloween. We all have costumes. I do need to get candy, but we've also thrown the idea out of getting pizza on Halloween, but we might end up just doing soups in the crock pot. Added up is $6.25, and I'm actually really hoping that I can throw some of this towards debt. But my goal is to not spend on anything else because the last week of October, I am hustling to try to pay off debt. Oh, gosh dang it. I love hearing that, guys. Like, that girl right there, she is putting every single dollar to work. Every single dollar has a job in her budget. And if you guys want to get ahead financially, that is what it's going to take. Now, some of you are going to be like, groceries, $50, how she's doing? But she lives in a lower cost of living area. Props to her for living on a budget, having a game plan financially, not just going out there and spending money randomly and wildly with no game plan in sight. She has a job for her dollars, and I can guarantee you this girl's going to kick ass and she's going to get rid of the rest of that $12,000 that she wants to pay off in debt. So props to her. Guys, this was a fun one. I like not all the doom and gloom now for this video. I hope to do more of these because I want you guys to take this as motivation. See other people who are doing the right things with money and then apply that to your everyday life and that's how you slowly start to get ahead. Now, I know there's a lot being thrown at you on this video. The number one thing I can say is take it one step at a time. Don't not, Try not to get too overwhelmed with everything. If you're just strictly looking to start learning to pay off debt, research everything you can about how to start a budget and paying off debt. If you're starting to want to invest a little bit, start researching more about investing. If you're looking up term life insurance, spend some time researching term life insurance before just jumping in to whoever you want to use. Everyone can kick ass financially, guys. It just It's up to you to make the decision to be able to do that and to be able to want that in life. Because if you don't want it, let's be honest, you're not gonna work towards it. So I hope the best for you all and I hope you guys enjoy this video because I know I did. It's nice to see other people kicking ass with money.